And ladies and gentlemen, once we're, once again we are back here on the stage show of uh, GameSpot's Live 2012 Comic Con coverage. Right now I've got Kyle Stolick, the community manager on Sleeping Dogs. That's right. Kyle, nice to meet you. thanks a lot for swinging by. No problem, no problem. I'm excited to show uh, you know more Sleeping Dogs footage. We're always eager to do that. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. So we've actually got the demo going right here. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, cool. Um, right now uh, in the game, you're Wei Shen. And, you know, I'll give a background on the game. A little yeah, overview. for the for the folks out there. The who uninitiated. Might not be yeah. yeah. So it's an open world game from UFG. Um, it's uh, published by Square Enix, and uh, you play as Wei Shen, an undercover cop uh, who must infiltrate the triads and kind of bring them down. Uh -huh. Anyone who's maybe seen Infernal Affairs might kind of you know see little similarities there. Okay. So, um, so it's Hong Kong action movie vibe? Yeah, yeah. We actually have one of the actors from uh, Infernal Affairs uh, did a voiceover for this game. Um, he, his name is Edison Chen, and uh, we were actually at a New York Film Festival with him last weekend doing all this stuff. But uh, anyway, this mission that we're on with uh, uh, Wei Shen right here, basically it's a, uh, we're going after some guy that betrayed the triads, and we have to uh, uh, kind of take him as a hostage and bring him back to the, the authorities, the triad authorities, if you will. We've already got a question uh -oh. here on Twitter, and I believe it comes from an account called Sleeping Dogs the Game. <laughs> I, it's not it's not the official account. No, no. I just looked at it. That's one of our biggest um, fans. Yeah, that's one of your biggest fans. <laughs> He's wondering about being able to free roam once you finish the story. Yes, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we, we felt that, I mean, that's integral. It'd be, uh, it wouldn't be as much fun if we didn't allow that. So. <laughs> and uh, right now we're showing off um, a very uh, architected experience here. Um, it's it's not open world or anything like that. The whole game is open world, but yeah. the, we want to really spe tell a specific story in these instances of the game. So that's why we're showing this off right now. And right now, uh, we're, our, our driver Johnny is uh, doing a lot of the uh, combat segments. Um, you can counter a lot of the moves, you can uh, do a lot of grapples, you can uh, interact with the environment, and hopefully he'll interact with the environment here. I think he can hear me, so. <laughs> you can toss the enemies, but uh, a lot of people ask us if there's, no, if there's any blocking. Um, there's no blocking right now, we mainly did a counter system. It's, it's more fluid that way, instead yeah. of like stopping and stalling and stuff like that. Here, we're gonna interact with the environment. Oh, Let's we'll no. do that a, a little bit more in, in an upcoming segment. And uh, the combat was heavily inspired, and uh, we worked with, inspired by Hong Kong action flicks, uh, mixed martial arts. We worked with George St. Pierre, who you might know, GSP, the MMA oh, fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually uh, came into UFG many times and uh, helped show them how to do some of the moves and stuff like that. And uh, I hope he had more clothes on than a usual UFC match. <laughs> that is one of the dudes who wears those super short, tight shorts. Yes, uh, he's a big man, so yeah. uh, you know maybe it's to fear him or something. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, he came into the studio wearing all clothes, <laughs> and. Uh, that's actually, good. And we have a video coming out soon that actually shows him showing the, uh, the animation team how to do a lot of the moves and stuff. And it's really cool. And uh, the animation team had something that was a little off. And uh, if you actually pre-order Sleeping Dogs at Best Buy right now, you can get the GSP pre-order pack, which has his uh, flying fist punch. So. Nice. Right now, uh, that, he just bought a grappler, um, different enemy type that you can't uh, exactly grapple with, obviously. Um, uh, one of the moves you can do is like you hold X, you'll do a power move. So those are kind of strong on these types of guys. Did a shoulder tackle there. Those are useful for taking out enemies with weapons. Uh, more en environment interactions here. Uh, let's see. Um, Jay on Twitter is asking: Is there a way to make the AI more aggressive during the fights? Like, is it w would playing on a harder difficulty level? Lead yeah, more yeah. Of a gang it, up it, kind of situation. Well, in the, if you're playing the game, you can actually uh, get the uh, enemies to fear you. Like right now, if you see that uh, he, he kind of took a lot of these guys out using the environment, mm -hmm. they'll actually cower in the corner back. They'll they'll try to kind of drop their guard and like to take them out really easily. And he did the knife kill. A lot of people who've been playing this lately haven't done that one, so I'm really happy to see that. It's so brutal. The old knife. <laughs> To the gut. <laughs> but all knife to the gut and slash, you know? And right now, he leaped, he leapt over the uh, the obstacle to take out the guy and get his gun right away, so now we have that. So it's about fluidity a lot. Um, you saw the shoulder tackle and mm -hmm. then that one. Now we're gonna do a little bit more gunplay right here. You might see that this is heavily inspired by Hong Kong action flicks as well. Um, if you go into slow motion, the more enemies you kill while in slow motion, you'll actually uh, extend the life of that. So if he is really good here, he'll just take them all out in one sequence. Come on, Johnny, our driver, you can do it. He can hear me right now. So. Uh, Keelan on Twitter is wondering, can you uh, take weapons from people in the game? Uh, yeah, you can. You can take, like, uh, the shoulder tackle is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, like, we earlier we showed the shoulder tackle to take out the uh, knife and... 
Okay. I thought he was going to die there. He was really close. <laughs> so I'm curious about uh, the open world because that's one of my favorite types of genres. Okay. Is that open world action game or really any type of open world setting. Can you talk us about the city, uh, the size of it, and like the you know just the characteristics characteristics of it in terms of how it changes from one location to another? Yeah, um, well, Hong Kong itself is a really big area, you know, I mean, one of the most populated places on the planet. And, uh, you know, putting that whole place in the game would be really difficult. So they really tried to get the boroughs of, of uh, Hong Kong, you know, their individual unique flavor. At the same time, Hong Kong is a dense place, so right. when you're in there, there'll be some places that are a little bit more wide open, like, you know, a park type area, but, mm -hmm. you know, here you'll see a lot of, uh, oh, he died at the uh, presentation. Uh-oh. Nice job, guys. But, but but uh, in the game, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of different flavors of Hong Kong, such as the unique vehicles, Tuk Tuks, and things like that. Can kind you of drive Tuk Tuks? You can drive Tuk Tuks. You can drive, uh, drive double-decker buses. I'm going to go on a Tuk Tuk rampage. <laughs> in fact, I'm only exclusively going to drive Tuk Tuks in this game. Well, one thing that we have in the game is actually uh, unique web-based challenges that are gonna, uh, we're going to release all the time. And uh, if you if you if you want stuff like that, maybe we'll start including it in the web-based challenges. We have uh, little badges that you get. So I've had a uh, personal uh, comments on on how we do that, and uh, it's been a lot of fun creating unique challenges, like most headshots, most shots maybe in the crotch or something. <laughs> Depends on what the community wants. Uh -huh. Be very vocal, people. <laughs> Uh, now that you mention it, you you guys are only going to get uh, most shots in the crotch, I think. <laughs> well, uh, when the the, Uf, the UFG United Front Games who made this game, they uh -huh. were talking to me one day, and they're like, when they first implemented the stat system, there was one guy on the team who actually had like. 5,000 crotch shots oh, God. in like the first week of the implementation. So they said it was crazy. Like they're like, "What were you doing the whole time?" You know. <laughs> uh, Sly Cooper FTW 24/7 is asking about dual wielding guns. Is uh, that a no, not. We have a, a single wield, and uh, yeah, that's about it right now. We have a lot of melee weapons though. They're a lot of fun. Um, we do have a purse that you can use. So nice. you know, sorry, no dual wield, but we do have a purse. It's just as good, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, a natural um, transition from dual wielding. It, it is, isn't it? I mean, I always carry around a person who has a backup, and I don't. But. <laughs> yeah, so if, you, if any of you other folks out there have questions, feel free to tweet us. Uh, the account is GameSpot. And uh, I will ask your question live on the air, and hopefully we can get that answer. Now, this segment, uh, obviously, we already met the guy, and we're just try trying to chase him. Wade didn't exactly have the quickest reflexes when the guy ran right b beside him. but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thankfully, Wei is in shape, and this guy, other guy, isn't. So we're gonna catch up to him. <laughs> we're grabbing, grabbing him. Uh, if this guy dies here, the mission ends. So uh -oh. hopefully, Johnny won't lose again. <laughs> that would, that would be ideal. It'd be, yeah, it'd be kind of embarrassing if he lost again. If I, if I could glare at him right now, I would. <laughs> yep, he did. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna glare at him a lot and give him crap after this. Let's see if we've got any <laughs> other questions. Uh, the game usually isn't this difficult. <laughs> All right, hopefully we can get it this time. Yeah, we'll get it. I've got faith in him. You know, life is about learning from your mistakes. <laughs> it is, it is. Hey, you get to see this beautiful area with the nice lighting and, uh -huh. and the explosions. All random explosions, obviously. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, Hu Long is wondering, can you turn off the English subtitles for spoken Chinese? Uh, yeah, well, uh, there's three uh, subtitle options, uh, on, off, and then just Cantonese, so that, you know, just the Cantonese has subtitles. Uh, that's what I uh, have all the time. Um, obviously, if you turn that off, you might not get the whole story. Right. So <laughs> you might want to have that on, unless you speak Cantonese, of course. Do you? I, I'm great. I, I speak so much Cantonese. Really? I know. Literally, I had a college roommate who spoke Cantonese, and he taught me how to say like two or three vulgar phrases. <laughs> it's always the vulgar phrases, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm, in, I'm in, you know, uh, Montreal, and I, I know like three things in, in, that are vulgar in French, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I wish we could talk more about the story, but uh, I've been specifically told do not talk a whole lot about the stories because, you know, it's, a, it's it's inspired by Infernal Affairs, The Departed. Uh -huh. It's a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, undercover cop type stuff. Uh, here you see the uh, cop experience and the triad experience. Mm -hmm. Doing more uh, quests and uh, side missions for each of them, you actually get uh, more unlocks uh, specific to that type of thing. Um, I, I can't go into that a whole lot right now. We're still going to reveal a whole lot more, but uh, 
August 14th it comes out. Um, Pre-order today you get special things such as the GSP pack. I'm supposed to plug it. <laughs> Don't forget that GSP pack. Don't forget the GSP pack, yeah. Uh, Luis on Twitter is wondering about any sort of character customization? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of it. We have a lot of uh, unique clothes. Sometimes the clothes will get you actually uh, different attributes. Um, there's also other RPG elements such as if you eat certain foods, drink certain things, you get health regeneration, additional damage. Any, uh, of any sort of like car customization? Paint uh, no, we don't have that in the game. Um, you know, if that's something people would like to see in a, in a future Sleeping Dogs title, please support this one. <laughs> <laughs> a very subtle way of saying, please buy our game. Well, I didn't say that, you but did. yeah. <laughs> you absolutely did not say that game. Um, Actually, you just answered a question here. Nate Palos Palazzo is wondering about RPG elements. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, you know, it's the whole face system of, you know, do you support the triads more? Do you support the cops more? Uh, you know, eating different things and then uh, clothing customization and stuff like that. So. All right. Uh, Majed Al Said is wondering any multiple endings or is it just the one ending? ending? Uh, it's it's one ending right here because uh, they had a specific story they wanted to tell about Wei Shen and his uh, you know journey into the triads and stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's very specific and in. in they're really confident in the story that they had, that they're wanting to tell. They spent, you know, a long time making this game, and so, like I said, story's a big point. We're really keeping it close to our chest until release, so hopefully people will enjoy that. All right, and if it's inspired by Infernal Affairs, I would imagine there's going to be a plot twist or two. <laughs> Playing a coy. <laughs> maybe, maybe one or two, you know, <laughs> maybe right away. Maybe, we'll maybe, maybe instantly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we've, we've uh, really shown off specific parts of the game, so oh. we're trying to like tiptoe around certain oh, okay. things. And even in one of the demos we've shown to the public, we've kind of altered some things. So you might see different things from our demos than when in the final release. So oh, okay. we didn't want to give away too much. All right, well, yeah. we'll avoid any more uh, spoilers on top yeah. of the ones that we've already uh, <laughs> dropped today thus far. Cool. Uh, Kyle, you mentioned it a moment ago, but go ahead and remind folks when the game is going to be out in stores. August 14th in North America. Uh, we have many different pre-order packs. Uh, if you go on sleepingdogs.net, you can see all the different pre-order packs, um, including the GSP one, which will give you George St. Pierre's outfit in the game, which will give you ad additional attributes, including uh, new uh, his flying fist punch. So. All right. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Thank you very much. Appreciate Fun. it. Yeah. All right. So that was your uh, look at Sleeping Dogs. Now it's over to the Dark Horse, comic Dark Horse Comics booth over there on the show floor. Let's take a look.